And before anyone accuses me of stoking a coat culture war, which we all know is the less new buzzword, the public have quite rightly had enough of empty gesture politics. If another left-wing human rights London lawyer was ever in charge of our United Kingdom. That's Louis French, Tory MP and king of the political buzzwords for old Bexley and Sitcup. And he's my Wally of the Week. Now I'll tell you what they were debating later. But if I did ask you to guess, you would never get it in a million years. But anyway, he started straight off the bat with this. We've heard a lot about how this shouldn't be a political debate, Madam Deputy Speaker, today. But I'm afraid it is very much a political choice that have been made. Yes, the speech starts off with a bang, claiming that despite the talk of keeping politics out of the discussion, it's been nothing but politics all along. Cue the eye rolls. And dramatic music. Bom, bom, bom! Then cue the buzzwords with... And London highlights what Labour can do in power. A phrase that's probably been rehearsed more times than a high school drama play, but it gets better with this one. Where the only PC Londoners are likely to come across is political correctness. Well, thank heavens he cleared that one up, eh? Not your typical personal computer users, but those entrenched in the realms of political correctness. But then he goes for the old classic line that's been recycled more times than last week's leftovers. Tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime. Yes, tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime. But our Louis is just warming up because he comes out with this little belter of a perler. But when in power, those words could not be further from reality, from the pound shop Blairites. That's a creative jab at some less than authentic followers of the Blair era. But don't worry, when our Mr French is losing the chamber, the infamous buzzwords that have been overused like a broken record in recent times gets an airing again. And before anyone accuses me of stoking a coat culture war, which we all know is the less new buzzword to try and you know, shut down critical debates of their woke ideas. Yes, culture wars and woke ideas. But hey, oh, no political Tory buzzword rant would be complete without taking a swing at Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, from accusations of failed promises to claims of mismanagement. It's open season on the Mayor, you know. Quick to plead poverty at every opportunity but he always manages to find money for his mates or to waste on his latest pet projects rather than more funding for frontline policing. All paid for, of course, from the wallets of ordinary Londoners, including a staggering £200 increase in the Mayor's share of his council tax and his continued hammering of motorists across London. But then, back to the buzzwords. The public have quite rightly had enough of empty gesture politics. A phrase that perfectly captures the essence of political posturing without substance, eh? But then after saying the phrase, culture wars again, he then brought up this beauty. Yeah, yeah. And just warm, warm words from politician. He's proper going through with a bingo card, isn't he? But as the speech winds down, there's a sense of impending doom if Labour were to take the reins of power. Seriously? What chances do ordinary Londoners have when criminal gangs roam the streets of London targeting their next victims? Has he not heard of the craze? Anyway, our Mr French proper went for it big style now. If another left-wing human rights London lawyer was ever in charge of our United Kingdom. Yes, because nothing strikes fear into the hearts of citizens like a lawyer with a penchant for human rights. As the leader of the opposition has said himself, London highlights what Labour can do in power. With taxes up 70%, London now officially the slowest city in the world to drive. That's if your car hasn't been stolen already. Yes, move over, Tartoise. London's got a new title holder in the speed department. And more than 1,000 people tragically killed under this Labour mayor. A Labour-run United Kingdom, Madam Deputy Speaker, is a scary prospect indeed. See what I mean? But to be honest, this rant was a roller coaster ride of political theatrics, buzzwords, and comedic punches that would have made even the most stoic audience crack a smile. If you don't believe me, ask Lynn Brown. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I wish I could say it was an honour to follow the honourable gentleman, but I wouldn't like to mislead this house in any way. 
I also think that um, no, I mislead this House by saying I enjoyed the honourable gentleman's rant and extraordinary contribution this afternoon. I'd also like to just gently say, if he does want to audition um, to become the Conservatives' failing candidate for the mayoral election that's about to be held, there are better places to do it than here, particularly if he's too fritz to take an intervention from the other side. I would gently say it does suggest that the honourable gentleman isn't capable of listening to anybody or engaging in debate. He is very comfortable with his own voice. Now, we were wondering what Lim Brown meant by using the word frit. Well, while he was going through his buzzword rant, he showed his prowess as a master debater. Oh, that were a close one. When people asked him to give way. To do all in his power to further cut the use of stop and search. Now look at the state of London after eight years of Sadiq Khan's politically correct policing. Just look at the data. In London, we have had a 54% increase in knife crime since Labour took office. Knife crime offences rose by 17.1%. And before anyone accuses me of stoking a coat culture war, which we all know is the less new buzzword to try and you know, shut down critical debates of their woke ideas, I would also highlight that the official data shows that white people were the most searched ethnic group in this period. 10,000 more over a two year period. And it's little wonder when decent, hard working frontline officers feel that time and time again they do not have the backing of the mayor and their leaders to do the dangerous job of being a police officer in London. Well yes, too fritz to have the balls to back up his buzzword rant by taking interventions. Guess who was one of those who asked him to give way? Kim Ledbitter. Yes, the sister of murdered MP Joe Cox. Now, why is this so important? Well, the debate was about the banning of knives and swords from our streets. And also to make matters worse, Kim Ledbetter, who could have made a speech about her or her family's experience of the death of her sister, but she didn't though. She talked about the experience of two families who she's been working with after the death of people within their families from knife crime. Now, that must have been incredibly difficult for her to speak about. So much so, she received this glowing tribute from the speaker and you will never guess who gave the next tribute. On behalf of the whole house, can I say to the Honourable Lady that uh, we all appreciate the courage that it takes for her to speak on this subject and that we, as a house and as friends and acquaintances, will never forget the sacrifice made by her sister, Jo Cox, while she was carrying out her duties as a Member of Parliament. Thank you. Louis French. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I would also like to place on record my um, kind of thanks and the courageousness that you've shown in demonstrating your personal family experience. You couldn't make it up, could you? Now, Kim Ledbetter selflessly talked about others suffering in this debate and the tireless work they're doing on a situation where she said, there is no easy solutions and gimmicks alone are not the only answer to be followed by this complete donut whose only answer to knife crime was another buzzword with racist undercurrents called stop and search. Now these are the same people who will support stop and search up until the point they're the ones who are being stopped and searched. Now I could have let you watch the full rant but to be honest, he's such an unserious person, so I'm not going to do that to you. So he's my Wally of the Week. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below and I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.